we're here in South Africa. We're going to our very first stop where we're going to be tasting some absolutely amazing wines. Guess where our first stop is? Right here at Stellenbosch and it's Aslina. So let's go inside, let's look at the range of wines, let's get some history behind the production and of course we get to do some tasting. Join us! When I agreed to study winemaking, I had no idea. Like literally, I had no idea what wine was. When they spoke about wine, I had my own pictures in the head. And so much so, even when I was tasting wine for the first time, it was just one of the most horrible things I've ever had. So I, when I do tasting with people, I I relate to a person when I give them to taste and they go, Ew, and I relate because I know I've been there. I've, I had to walk that path of saying, why do people drink? because it's not as nice. And then I think when I was working as a student, that's when I learned actually more about wine and understanding the wine and started to appreciate it. So when I started working um, at the, my previous job, it was for me more like to say, okay, now I'm in a working space. I know in future I want to start my own business. So how do I navigate the space? How do I build from where I am? So my building from where I was was I needed to make sure that every there is no job that is not mine. So every job was mine, literally throwing myself out there. But also I had to make sure that I meet people. Um, I go out into the industry, meet people, and not having the thing, because I know there's this thing that the industry is white and it's male and all that. But I said to myself, okay, fine, yes, it's that. So how do I? And then I went out there, go to seminars, meet people, have a conversation, you know. And I was making sure that every time I go to, if it's a seminar, by the time I get out there, there must be one person who knows me and I know them. That I know they've got a cat or a dog or anything on, in those details. So I work around that. Hence, I even managed to get the way of like, when I had to go do my harvest in France was to talk to one of the people in the industry. Do I have connections? Whom should I speak to? And getting connected to be able to do that. Did my harvest in all these different countries. And I even went back to France to consult in one of the wineries. And so after doing that and collaborating with an American winemaker, making a wine that was sold in the US and came 2016, I was like, okay, now it's time. So it was really through progression to say, now it is time to, to start Aslina. And I had already planned even way back that I knew that when I start a company, it was going to be named after my grandmother. I think the industry itself is competitive, but also it's, um, it's like, for me, I look at it, it's a family that you're, not comp you're competing, but you're not competing. So when we started the company, I started with four wines. I had Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, Cabernet, and our Bordeaux blend called them Sassan. And in 2021, I introduced a Chenin Blanc, which, was, which is skin fermented. But it's a wine that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Like while I was working for my previous job, I was specializing on reds. And I was always curious, what happened when we ferment a white wine on skin? And so when I started asking, I was like, now it's going to be the time. But it only took that long that I only did this in 2021. And the first production of that was about four and a half thousand bottles. It was sold out on the spot. Um, by the time we bottled, we basically just giving people's allocation. And so we, do, we did the 2022, now we're prepping to bottle the 2023. Yeah, so we are looking for someone in Ghana. Okay. Uh, we are looking to have food in Ghana because literally you're not going to... Look, it's, 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 it's exciting. It's, it's, it's... Every time I think about it, it's more like for me, I'm grateful. Um, I'm grateful, I'm humbled about it because look, it's been, it's been a path. It's a journey of going to the unknown because even at the first time when I was told that I was going to be studying winemaking, not knowing something and actually making something out of it and making the best out of it and making it a success, it's, um, it's an honor. No, the I am here, I think it has been hitting me along the path. But the part, of, the part of me saying this is a gift for me, actually it only happened this year. Oh, wow. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> it happened this year when I was, actually I was tasting the Shine and Blanc and then I was like, it was just, I was thinking and I'm like, you know what, this is a gift. I thought of a wine, I, had, I tasted it in my mind, thinking how it should taste like, and it come out like that. And I was like, honestly, this is just a gift. 
Next. It's cheers to Aslina. Cheers, cheers to Aslina. Aslina. Yes. Okay, thank you so much for visiting us. And now that your birthday is around the corner, I hope you celebrate and have a good time. Uh, I'm not sure if it's allowed to say, maybe be blessed before your birthday, but... No. Tell me about great wine. Tell me about absolute uh, fantastic taste. Tell me about that gushing scent of fruits and flowers coming out of that wine glass after you squish. Oh boy, amazing stuff. Thank you so much to Aslina Wines. Next stop, we're going to Kleinud. We're going to do some more tasting and get to experience the beauty of wine production. We're still here in South Africa and we're bringing you the genesis, uh, the processes, the techniques of wine production right from the heart of the wine lands here in South Africa. Now to the next stop. Oh So it's been a smooth ride uh, from Aslina. Now we are at Klingwood. This is actually a farm. So it's still day one of our tour of the wine lands of South Africa. And we are currently at Klingwood. Join the fun. Welcome to clean wood. So clean wood, the meaning clean wood, it means something small and precious. And my name is Danwin James and I work at this lovely establishment. Together with a very small team, we work for Gerard de Villiers and Libby de Villiers who owns this property. So they used to live in an area in Cape Town which is called Tamboerskloof. There's no vines in Tamboerskloof, it's just a nice living area. So Gerard de Villiers, his day job is he's a cellar designer. He designs the flow of the cellar for wineries all over the world. So he's done over 300 wineries in the world. He's done all the big ones in South Africa. Names like Niederberg, Poschendal, Telegraph, Babylon Storen, Rastenfriede, La Motte, wow. and I can go on. So if I would explain him to people roughly, I would say he's the Tiger Woods of designing wineries. And on this farm and this little area that we've got here, which is the upper Blauklippen, is known for Shira. You must be very special to get Shira wrong here. If you do get it wrong, you must quit your day job. Not a lot of fish, but this is uh, it's it's something very nice for them. Yeah. And so they all don't consume? No. Just catch, just, just catch and release. So these waters here basically comes from the cellar and Okay, so we are in Western Cape, uh, Stellenbosch, which is basically almost the wine capital for South Africa. And it's really, really difficult mm. to make wine wrong in Stellenbosch. Mm -hmm. um, you can basically make from Sauvignon Blanc to Chenin Blanc, going towards Cabernet Sauvignons and Shiraz. Okay. And in this valley that we are at the moment is the upper Blauklippen. And this valley is known for Shiraz. 
we make a beautiful sira, which is the tambouche glow sira from Klinu. This is Gerard's design. Mm. So his design is basically um, creating sellers that is around gravity. Mm -hmm. So that you work softer with the grape. So even in the vineyard, when we harvest the grapes, we harvest them in 17 kilogram lugs and then we bring them just like that to the seller. Most people would tip them in a big bin at the back of the tractor, but then the bottom ones might squash. Mm. With these crates, they don't squash. So when the grapes come here, the bunches are still whole mm. and the grapes untouched. So basically there will be a table standing here mm -hmm. where there will be four ladies, a table like that. Yeah. So it's a vibrating table. Mm -hmm. We'll vibrate and then they take out all the green bits, all the leaves and everything that we don't want so that the only, only the buns goes through. Then it get destocked at the top there. Yeah. In that machine is almost like stainless steel fingers that turn, that takes off all the berries from the stalks. Mm. And then it falls only the berries on that table again, second table. And then another four ladies, they will take out the raisiny bits and the green ones. And then the wine will go to fermentation. Mm. All right, so if we walk in this second room, yeah. that's all fermentation. I just see. Here's the capsule. They put on these capsules right here, this machine. Okay. And then from here, it will move to this table where they will sit with a glue machine. Mm. And all our labels are hand torn with a ruler. So the edges are rough. Okay. And then hand labeled by these two ladies. Why, why do you want to go through all that? Yes, that's a very good question. As you can see here, this is a piece of art. Yes. Every single bottle uh -huh. is different. There's not one of them that's exactly the same. So you buying a piece of art. Oh wow. So Have four years staying in the crates, mm -hmm. unlabeled, <laughs> aging, and yeah. then hand labeled. And then it goes to the sales area inside where we sell these bottles. And every single bottle is a piece of art. So we've been aroused by the gentle aroma of the Kleinwood Farms. We've gone on a beautiful tour of the facility. We entered the cellar and guess what? The most intriguing part for me is the aging process to get you out there the best quality wines ever. This has been a Kleinwood Farms. We've been aroused by the feeling and of course that taste. Hopefully we'll be seduced at our next stop. Guess where we're going next? Spear, we understand it's the winery estate. And of course, there can be only more. It only gets better on here, and so you'd want to stay with us even as we move from the Klein Farms and make our next stop at Spear Wineries. Welcome to Spears Winery here at Stellenbosch, South Africa. Now, not only does it present a beautiful scenery, a wonderful atmosphere, but also it provides a variety, a wide range of wines, uh, amazing taste. We're going to go in there, get an education on proper wine etiquette, proper education on exactly what ranges they are offering. And then, of course, we'll bring to you the details, the ups and downs of wine production here at Spears. And then we'll treat you to some amazing uh, wine varieties produced, of course, by Spears here in South Africa. So join us. We'll take a trip inside. We'll sit with the sommelier and we'll get to understand what it is to be a wine producer here in South Africa. On my behalf and on behalf of Spear, welcome. Um, this is our tasting room. Uh, it looks very quiet at the moment, but we do about 240 people here a day. 
in season. So it does get extremely busy. And then we've got different options of tastings. You'll see on the sheet in front of you, on the left hand side, we've got the signature tasting, which is our entry level tasting. And then after that, we've got our chocolate and wine, right, which we are of course doing today. Then we've got our winemaker selection. There you get to taste our top tier wines. And then recently introduced, we've got our organic wine tasting because we produce a very, very interesting range of organic wines, which is something that's picking up in popularity through and through. In fact, once we've tasted these three, I'd like to introduce you to one or two organic wines. It's really, really good. So the idea behind chocolate and wine pairing is that people have the mindset that whenever you're serving a sweet dish, you need to serve a sweet wine to go with it. In fact, it's easier to pair a dry wine with sweet food than what it is to pair a sweet wine with sweet food. Because sometimes the sweet of the wine, the sweetness of the wine and the sweetness of the food clash, right? And the wine tends to become a little flabby if it doesn't have a big enough acidity. But serving a dry wine in general, they've got high acidities. So hence that's able to hold up to the sugar in the chocolates. And what we want to do here is we want to give the limelight to both the chocolate and the wine. Right. So you want to give the chocolate the, the stage to enjoy, the, enjoy for what it is. And then maybe a little bit more important, you want to give the wine a chance to show off its two colors. But then we've got to see if they both work. And often when I go to, when I present food and wine pairings, people will have a mouthful of food, they'll swallow the food, and then they'll take a sip of the wine and then say, oh, perfect pairing. But you're not going to know if it's going to work if you don't have both food and wine in your mouth at the same time. Right? And as disgusting as what it might sound, it's, as, it's the only way you're going to know if food and wine work. And how, the, how do you know? It's a, it, you'll know. It's, it's a perfect marriage. The food doesn't overpower the wine and the wine doesn't overpower the food. An absolutely educative session. You get to know all the nitty gritties when it comes to wine production here in South Africa. Of course, there was a bonus where you get to understand wine etiquette as well, the production, and of course, uh, that tasting. But here is the catch. You get to take wine and chocolate all together. And then of course, you get to decipher that explosion of spicy fruits in your mouth. It's been beautiful, it's been amazing, as we intend to wrap up day one. But guess what? We're going for dinner. I might just be generous enough to save you a plate. Stay with us here on our Wines of South Africa Diaries as we continue to tour the beautiful wine lands of South Africa. Oh, God.